Um, I think it's pronounced crew nighty. What's up boys and girls? It's your boy Johnny, AKA crew 90 and beauty is pain. Now I'm not saying this, that like, I'm so beautiful. I just know this offhand. I'm like a solid seven. So like, but no, I know this because of a specific time where I tried to increase my beauty and ended up with a face full of pain. So ladies, and uh, those men out there who actually care about their appearance, uh, I am greatly impressed with the lengths that y'all will go through in order to get beautiful. I have bushy eyebrows. This is a thing, like look at them. They like caterpillars on my forehead. And I've been plucking my unibrow since I was like 14 years old when it was first really like brought to my attention. I had a crush on this girl and I was always trying to figure out ways to be around her and my parents were friends with her parents. So I was like, hey, why don't we have them come over and go swimming? It was the summer, figured it'd be cool. I'd have her in a bikini. She'd be over with me all afternoon and into the evening. Then her little brother, we're all in the pool. He swims up to me and he's like right in my face and he very loudly says, um, why do you have little hairs in between your eyebrows? And that was the first time I really noticed that I had a unibrow. I've been plucking them ever since. So, um, yeah, these things have been an issue for a long time. I have bushy, big old eyebrows. And I can't wait till I'm old and I'm like practically bald and I still have these big old, at that point probably gray, caterpillars right on my face. Point is, I decided couple years ago that I was gonna actually do something about it. So I was like, you know what? I wanna get my eyebrows done. Now, this isn't something that a lot of guys typically do. So it's not like I could go to my friends and be like, hey, where should I go? So instead I asked a few of my female friends what they did and they all told me that they waxed. Now I was not about to get my eyebrows waxed. That wasn't gonna happen. So I started really kind of looking into different options. I didn't wanna get them tweezed because just plucking this myself wasn't the most comfortable. I couldn't imagine having my whole eyebrows tweezed. Plus again, um, you know, that gives them a very defined look and that is quote unquote a little bit too feminine for what I was going for. I just wanted them cleaned up. I didn't necessarily want them shaped. So I settled on threading. So I head to the mall. I'm feeling a little self-conscious already because you know, I know that these places are typically um, full of only feminine clientele and uh, you know, women. <laughs> and I don't really wanna be the only dude in there. And then I arrive and it's all like smoking hot girls my age. And I'm like, oh my gosh, these women are gonna totally make fun of me. They're totally gonna be judging me. Like I can't do this. And so I kind of just walk past the place and pretend like it wasn't where I was going and you know, I'm in the mall. So I go and I get a Cinnabon and I come back. Hopefully most of these women are gone. There's different women and they're just as hot. And I'm like, I can't do this. Like these are the types of girls that will absolutely make fun of a man who goes in here to get his brows threaded. Like I can't do this. And as I'm debating what to do and to just maybe go home and do it with my, my tweezers myself, you know, up walks this dude that looks like he just stepped right off of like an Abercrombie poster and he heads in and I'm like, oh, well that obviously looks like the type of dude that would be dating girls like them. Uh, I'm curious though, like who he's going to, which girl is his. So I kind of watch, but he walks right past all of them and goes up to the counter. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this dude is about to get some manscaping done. And I'm thinking, well, if this guy, I mean, he looks like, like not necessarily a manly man in the sense of like ruggedness, but like a man's man in the sense of he could pretty much pick any woman in this place and go home with her. If he can go in here and get his brows done, I could do it. So I walk right into, and uh, as soon as he sits down, um, I'm filling out my form already. And then I sit down right across from him and I wait. And each of these girls goes up and it's like nothing. They're in and out of the chair in a few minutes and they're back on their, you know, merry little way. Homeboy goes up. He gets his brows done and whatever else. It looked like they did his cheeks too. Um, and he's on his way. And then they call me up. And so the, the technician, right? The, the brow technician. She's like, so I, I see that you marked that it's your first time. What exactly would you like? And I told her, I said, it is my first time. I don't really know what I want. Mostly I want to walk out of here looking like I still have masculine, you know, male typical eyebrows but I also don't want them to just look like somebody grabbed a bunch of hair and just threw them onto my face. And she's like, so you want me to clean you up, but not necessarily shape you. 
And I was like, yes, that sounds proper. Let's go with that. And she's like, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thin this out and then I'm just gonna kind of get all of the strays, but I'm not gonna like change their shape of your actual brow or anything. And I was like, perfect, let's go. So she starts teaching me like the proper technique, like you have to hold yourself like this so that like they can, I don't, I don't know. I'm guessing so it makes the, the hairs easier to get to. And she starts doing the, her thing with the thread and getting it ready. And then she, she tells me, okay, I'm gonna start now. And she begins to use words like easy and um, painless and simple to describe what she's gonna do. And I'm like, I could do this, let's go. That thread made contact with my skin and ripped out the first one or two hairs. And it was like the gates of hell just opened and unleashed a bunch of angry demons directly onto my face. It was like the bloodiest battle scene in the movie 300 was being waged against my brows. This was like one of the most painful experiences I've ever had. And I lost my leg, okay? I was actually going to the memory of having lost my leg in an attempt to get away from where I currently was. This lady is just like, like, boom, like I can hear the sound of the thread, but I can barely hear it because all I can hear is screaming from my brows as they're being like murdered and ripped off of my, my face. You know that song like Ave Marie? I can hear that like playing in the background. I was in so much pain and I, I could feel like a tear starting to well. I didn't even cry when I had my leg cut off. And this lady's just going along and then she's like, okay, we're done. And I was like, oh, thank God. And then she goes, with the top of the one. And I'm like, I still got a whole bottom and two more sides. Like, I could just stop right now. We're just going to be done. But I keep going. And she's just ripping my face off. I am telling you, the blood was everywhere. Like, this, they're probably going to think there was a murder inside of this threading place. Like, I don't even think this girl has a license. I think in reality, she's probably just like, God, she's probably not even using thread. I think she's got like a carving knife up there and she's just like chop my, I, I'm not opening my eyes. Like I'm supposed to be holding this brow, but like this eye can be watching. Nope, I got that eye squinched shut. I'm not looking, man. She finally finishes this and I feel her put something wet on me. Found out later it was lotion. Then she moves on to this side. This side hurt worse than this side. I didn't even realize I was holding my breath until I felt her stop. And she said, honey, you can breathe. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know how all these dainty little women that were in the seat before me were not even like batting an eye. They were just going right along. This woman spent probably what felt like three hours ripping off every piece of skin that I had in this general area. She referred to this as my T-zone. I don't think I had a T-zone left, okay? And she kept having to readjust my hand because I was holding this brow and it kept going down as I was wiping my tears. We finish. I feel her put some more lotion on this area. And at this point, I'm like so hot, I just wanna like take my shirt off. I'm like sweating. It feels like I was just at the gym for like a year, okay? And she's like, here you go, and hands me a mirror. And I timidly open one eye to see the massacre that just took place on my face. And there's like no blood. Like, can you believe that? Not a single speck of blood. In fact, my eyebrows looked pretty good. I was kind of impressed. She got all the little hairs that even like the tweezers couldn't get when I would tweeze at home for my unibrow. Then she got like all the random hairs that were in here. She got all this, but my brows still looked pretty good too. Like they didn't look feminine. They, they still looked like eyebrows, but there was like definition to them. Like they weren't shaped, but they were defined. And there was like, there was some redness, but like I said, there was no blood. They were fine. My face was there too. Like she didn't take all the skin off. And I looked at the clock and it had only been like three and a half minutes. Uh, I mean, okay. So I looked at her and I looked back at the mirror and I looked at her and she's like, is there a problem? Like what? And I was like, that looks pretty good. It hurt really bad. And she's like, oh, it doesn't hurt. And said, besides, the more you come, the less that it hurts each time. 
But that didn't hurt. You did fine. You barely even flinched. And I'm thinking, what do you mean I barely flinched? I felt like I was like sliding into the seat as you were going. But she tells me I did good. And uh, I'm wondering if I'm gonna get a lollipop like you know kids get when they get the haircut, but there wasn't any lollipops. And she heads me back up to the counter to go ahead and pay and I leave a tip. And then they tell me that I can come back in six weeks. And I'm like, hell no, I will not be doing that again. So uh, for the next several years after that, I went back to just plucking myself with my, with my own little tweezers at home and just trying my best to keep these things in shape. But I always do think about that experience and um, maybe one day going back again. I'm older now. I think I could maybe handle it. I don't know, maybe. But yeah, I did get a very, very deep respect for all of those ladies and gentlemen out there who put themselves through so much pain just for beauty. And I did begin to realize just how much you guys go through to look good. Point of this video is, I think I might go ahead and get these done again. I haven't decided. But uh, yeah, so for those of you who haven't been threaded before, uh, maybe don't listen to me when uh, it comes to your decision of whether it's something to do or not because I think maybe I'm just a baby. <laughs> As always, it's your boy Johnny, AKA Crew90, and I'll catch you next time.